TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it, little warning, just in case. You see it. We need a week. Maybe, maybe not. We need it. Twitch.com is where you can catch a live stream. Usernames at the bottom of the screen. We also got Patreon. We post five to ten times a week. Tap in. We be watching Premier League highlights, UK TV shows, and movies sometimes. This is Camp Pay. We'll take it away. Season 5, episode 30. After this, we got two more episodes left. It's going to be a sad day. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Threats. I'll take it. More than 300,000 people contacted a leading debt charity over the first half of 2017 to seek help with their debts. The charity's figures show that the number of people falling behind on debt repayments has nearly doubled since the beginning of the decade. The average amount owed by people who contacted a leading debt charity in the first half of 2017 was 14 k for well, 14,367 pounds. Get them exact numbers out there. High Court Enforcement Agents Gary Ball and Matt Highway are in Worcester, Warwickshire. It's a nice ad. They're here to recover a debt of over £6,000 owed by Christopher Robinson and Amy Blees in unpaid nursery school fees. It's brand new, isn't it? Which probably means it's the right address. No one would have lived in here before then. No. A county court judgment was issued against the couple, but it wasn't paid. So the case was escalated to the High Court. The curtains are shut. Now the debt must be paid in full today. It's brand new. Is these all council flats or no? Or the agents have the right to remove assets, including the Audi parked outside, if it belongs to either defendant. Mm, it smells fresh around, doesn't it? They've got good manicured grass. Garbage bins are all intact. No, no dents or cracks in them. Hello, sir. It's after Christopher Robinson or Amy Blee. Is that yourself, is it? Yes. Hello, sir. My name's Gary Ball, High Court Enforcement Agent. It's my yeah. colleague, Matthew. Been sent here today, sir, with a High Court writ from it? nursery school. You've not received anything from them? You've not received this letter from us no, last week? Nothing. You've got an outstanding balance of £6,242.07, and seven so yeah. No. You've got kids, have you? Yeah. Obviously, in nursery age. So you must have sent them there. Yeah. Yeah, we, we. Why is he so creepy through the door like this? Brother, put both your eyes through the door. Don't look like this. You look like, here's Johnny. In nursery age. Weird. So you must have sent him there. Yeah. Yeah, we, we haven't received a thing from anyone. No. So we'd act straight away. So you'll, you're going to act it now then, sir? We're both of them. Well, the problem we've got today, sir, is obviously the writ commands us to be here today to collect the full amount or seize assets in the property. There's your copy there, sir. Wow. wow. Despite the fact that a letter of attendance has been sent to the address, the agent's visit has clearly come as a shock. Yeah. Gary and Matt must make it clear to Mr. Robinson what he needs to do next. Okay, so, so do you want to talk about this then, so yeah? Yeah. Okay. I can't leave the door open. You can't leave the door open? No, I've got two dogs here. I've got one by the stairs. Well, well you need to put them away then, then So it's simple, isn't it? I'm sure, I'm sure they'll do what you say. She's ten months old, mate. It seems Mr. Robinson is intent on keeping the dogs in and the agents out. So Matt goes to look for another way in. 
and finding an open door, he makes peaceful entry. Do you want to get that door open now, buddy, yeah? Get the door open. Put the dog away, yeah? Put the dog in one of the rooms so it's safe. Seriously, Lola, come here, Lola, Lola! But then, one of the dogs breaks free. Put it away then, it's not being silly. Okay, stay on I thought the dog was going to bite him up, man. I thought the dog was going to get on business. He's just trying to get a pet. He's just trying to get rubbed. Pause. It's okay. It's not alright, yeah? Why don't you come out and speak to us, yeah? That'd be easy, wouldn't it? The dog's safe in there, yeah? All I'm concerned about is the dog stays away. Yeah? They won't. Keep the dog where it is, then, yeah? The dogs may be safely away, but now Mr. Robinson disappears upstairs. He's very erratic, this guy. Yeah. Matt goes up to speak to him. Can you get this payment made, Christopher? Can you get this payment made? No, I'm stood here. You can't close the door when I'm stood here, can you? You want to talk to me from there? Chap, one way or another, we need to open a dialogue, don't we? Otherwise, we're going to get nowhere. Hello, sir. You want to talk to me or not? But instead of... Is he on drugs? Drugs might be involved. They might be in his system. I don't know, because the way he was still peering through that door is... He's still sitting with me. And it's, it's striking my curiosity. Engaging with the agents, Mr. Robinson decides to leave. The crazy part of this job is that you'll never go to two two jobs that are exactly the same. We can't guarantee how someone's going to react. Uh, some people react with anger, some people react with uh, huge emotion, some people re react by hiding, um, and, and you know that's just dependent on who they are. So he's going to leave? Matt and Gary have been in the house for over ten minutes. But with Mr Robinson flitting from one room to another to avoid them, Matt has to make the consequences of not cooperating clear. It's getting ridiculous there. Christopher, I'm not going to mess about like this for ages, so either you come and deal with it, or you produce payment of £6,242.07, or I'll start emptying stuff out of the house. It's up to you. But then, he makes an unexpected move. What are we doing then, Christopher? Yeah, he's just walked out, mate. And disappears through the back gate. Weird. Not talking to him. Just that will go away, does it? Yeah, it just disappears, doesn't it, if you've not heard from it for a while. With Mr. Robinson gone... He might have some type of m mental issue. The agents have no choice but to consider seizing goods in his absence. The Audi outside might cover some of the £6,000 debt, but Matt and Gary must also search inside for any goods of value. What's that man outside of the wood? Blaster. There are no major assets in the downstairs rooms, so the agents go upstairs to continue their search. That man ain't even loyal. He left his dogs to fend for... Did he take the dogs? Three bedrooms, two kids' rooms, the usual. But then, from an upstairs window, Gary spots something. How's he going there? Uh -huh. Back around his neighbours. He just took his, his um, Apple Mac around there. Mr. Robinson appears to be removing goods to a neighbouring property. Yeah, next up, neighbours. Now, actively obstructing the enforcement process by moving goods, it will take all of Matt and Gary's skills to get this case resolved. The, the best skill that they can use is 999. You know what I'm saying? When you bend your finger like this, I don't know. I've, I've never done it, but I'm just saying, in their job, that's the skill that he's talking about. Gotta be. Robinson taking a computer to a nearby house. He's just took his, his um, Apple Mac around there. Now, the agents need to make clear to Mr. Robinson that as he's obstructing the enforcement of the writ, they could call the police. But then, a man arrives. Hello, mate. Do you know the guy that lives here, do you? I do not, yeah. Oh, right, OK. Yeah, I was mine. Why is it I'm here? Left. I'm waiting to do a promotion in town. How are you? Promotion. OK. That's so so you just, so just parked so it in? I've known Chris for seven years. Right, OK. Uh, so and it's, 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 safe, it's not safe in town. Can you tell me what's in there? Yeah, in the boot there's loads of promotion stuff. Um, yeah. GMB. And it all relates to yourself, all does it? All my, there's trainers in the boot. Right. What's your name, sir? Julian Pepper. Julian Pepper. Just give us a second. 
It seems that Mr. Robinson's friend, Julian, has had a tip-off that the agents were in the house and is here to prevent his car from being seized. Matt goes to check out whether his claims are true. Julian, Julian Pepper. The documents inside the car are evidence that it does belong to the debtor's friend. No, it's fine. I'll put that, mate. I want to help the situation out, so how does it come to this and what is it regarding? He, he's going to have to OK that it's right to speak to you, mate. Can you ring him and I can take the OK over the phone, yeah? This Peppers guy is actually kind of, you know what I'm saying, logical. Hello, Chris. Am I OK to disclose your details to this, this gentleman that's here? Mr. Robinson authorises the agents to discuss his case with Julian. But then, he makes another claim. OK, you personally. So you've got a bankruptcy order from the court to show that you're bankrupt, yeah? Where, where is that, mate? You'll have it personally. It's, it's a piece of paper. I know you keep saying step change to me, but it means very little to me. It's just a debt charity. Mr. Robinson now claims he's bankrupt. But it seems that he's only in the application stage, and so the High Court writ is still live. What can you raise, mate? Can you raise some funds? You haven't got a pound? No? The difficulty is, mate, if you tell me you've got nothing, then that's, you know, we have to start removing goods. You can raise 200 pounds. Well, that's a start, isn't it? We're getting somewhere. So if you can raise 200 pounds, what can you, what can you pay going forward towards this debt? 200 pound a month. Well, what I'll do, mate, I'll put it to the client and see what they say. After saying he couldn't pay anything, Mr. Robinson has now made an offer. But as a £200 down payment is just a fraction of the £6,000 he owes, it might not be enough to satisfy the claimant. It hasn't got much at the moment, so... It's, it, it's, you, say, you say that, but if it was you old six and a half grand, you wouldn't be too impressed with it, would you? <laughs> you know what I mean? Matt goes outside to call the office with the offer. But then, suddenly, Mr Robinson appears at the door in the middle of a phone call. I'll pass you over to him. Oh, thanks. In an unusual development, it seems Mr. Robinson has called the claimant himself. Hello, my name's Gary Ball. So we've come round today with a high court rate. I'll just pass it to my colleague because he's the one that's been dealing with this. Uh, this is the claimant. Chris, Chris, have you just called her? Oh, yes. Hello, it's Matthew High, we're High Court Enforcement Agents. So we're here enforcing the writ at the moment um, on, on, on your behalf. It appears that Mr. Robinson has been trying to persuade the claimant to accept an informal payment plan. Matt now needs to get the case back under his control. I'm not doing, like, if I was working at DBL, whatever, I'm not accepting an informal payment plan because then it's going to resolve in me being back here at the end of the day. And I only want to do my job once. You feel me? I think your response to him needs to be that it's in our hands now and he needs to speak to us, but uh, no direct to it. Absolutely. We will certainly do our very best to get the best possible outcome for you. That's 100%. Oh, thank you very much. We'll do our best. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. After speaking to the claimant, it now becomes clear that Mr. Robinson will need to offer more than the £200 down payment he's offered. Is it still in there, is it? Yeah. Where's that one? I think it's put right. Christopher, is the dog away? Yeah. But to avoid the dogs getting out again, Mr. Robinson won't open the door. You need to raise some more funds, Christopher. I'm happy to set this on an arrangement for you, which will prevent removal. But you need to you need to raise five hundred pounds. So you've got two so far, you need to raise another three. But then he passes a bundle of cash through the door. Oh bro is disrespectful as hell. He got bread. He just don't want to up it. Is it? It's not five there, is it? Just check that, man. Having previously said he doesn't have a pound, Mr. Robinson immediately produces the five hundred pounds Matt's asked for in cash. At the end of the day, just take this as a win and just do the two hundred. I know you'll probably be back, but what we're going to do then, Christopher? I'm going to take the five hundred pounds today and put it on two hundred pounds a month. Okay. If for any reason you don't pay the £200 per month, we'll we back. can come back, we can force entry if necessary and we'll remove the goods. So it's a guarantee that you're going to pay. Knowing there's nothing of value in the house to list as a guarantee that Mr Robinson keeps up with his payment plan, 
Matt needs to recover the laptop the debtor tried to hide in his neighbour's house. Which way did he take this laptop that way? Next door. Next door that way. The neighbour's gonna give it for sure. Hello? Hello, sweet, you're right. Well, I caught enforcement agents. The gentleman's brought round a laptop to your house. Sorry? You passed it back, that's great, okay, thank you. I'm not playing hide and seek. He's got it back now. Yeah. Christopher, you got it back, let's have a look. Mr. Robinson passes Gary the laptop. It's a MacBook Pro. What colour is it? Silver. Silver. It's right in your face. With the laptop listed, Mr. Robinson signs the paperwork. So you've paid five hundred pounds today. The next two hundred pounds is on the twenty eighth of the fourth. I don't know, man. It's just something about talking through this door that just. Okay. And then two hundred pounds per month every month after that until it's paid off. You understand, yeah? All right, mate. Just let you know. Obviously, if we do return, we can force entry, remove the goods. Okay. The case is resolved for now. Thanks so much. Run away. Okay. Thanks. But if Mr. Robinson defaults on his payments, the agents will be back. Interesting chap. Now we have to think on our feet and just deal with the situation. We've got a little bit of money for the claimant, and hopefully he continues with his arrangement to pay the debt off in full. Probably take him three or four years, but hopefully he'll get paid off. Bro is living in brand new property. You're talking about he ain't got a pound. Bro, you got all the money. Bro, you got all the money. Personal debt levels in the UK are on the rise, with the total amount owed exceeding £1.5 trillion. Damn. Recent research shows that one in six people are burdened with financial difficulties, while four in ten are reported to have less than £500 in savings. Over 12... Over... <laughs> over a 12-month period... The UK's total interest repayment on personal debts are estimated to be almost 50 billion pounds. Seven thirty a.m. High Court enforcement agent Gary Brown and trainee Connor Jackson are near Portsmouth on the south coast. They're here to collect almost three and a half thousand pounds owed for an unpaid loan. We're looking to collect three thousand three hundred and six pounds. Okay. If the debtor can't or won't pay, Gary and Connor have the right to seize goods and vehicles belonging to him. And it looks as if they might be in luck. Oh yeah, you ran into a car lot, you know what I'm saying? Let's get this money. Okay, well, there's enough cars here. Can bro breathe? Okay, well... Ah, okay. I thought this, this part was too tight. It was looked like it was squeezing. There's enough cars here. Because, and then he was, like, out of breath a little bit. I was just concerned about his... You know what I'm saying? Despite the early hour, no one appears to be in. So Connor turns his attention to the vehicles parked outside. This vehicle's open. Most of them appear to be old and of low value. But the eight-year-old BMW might have some worth. So Connor does an online HPI check. I'm going to edit that out. The eight-year-old BMW might have some worth. So Connor does an online HPI check. This car here is uh, free of finance. Market value £6,800. So that would cover the debt. If it belongs to the debtor, the vehicle is an asset they can seize even in his absence. So Connor clamps it. But his actions haven't gone unnoticed. Someone's just looked at us from the top window. Are they? Yeah. 
It appears there is someone in after all. We'll stop playing for you but there's still no response. So Gary and Connor go round to the back of the house and find an open door. You in? Yeah. Hello? High Court Enforcement? Gary heads upstairs to search for the person he saw at the window and finds a man. This is Pete. I promise in America you getting shot. It's not I In bed. Hello mate. Is that you? Immediately. My name's Gary Brown, I'm an enforcement agent and I've got a high court writ. Yeah. Okay, have you got a telephone number for him? Sorry to have to get you up, because obviously this isn't your debt. This is the man is a relative of the debtor and he points Connor in the direction of his bedroom. He searches for paperwork connected to the clamped BMW. There doesn't appear to be any documents for the car, but he finds the debtor's driving license and passport. Do you want to bring the paperwork downstairs? Gary and Connor have proof they're in the right place. Now they must see whether the debtor is willing to pay. There's a lot of different people there, what the? His relative gets him on the phone. Hello there, my name is Gary Brown. Uh, I'm an enforcement agent and I've got a high court writ against you. So we're now here to remove goods unless the debt is paid. How much is the debt? At the moment it's £3,306.06. We've got a high court writ which allows us to remove goods if it's not paid. Right, well, we found evidence that you live here. Um, including your passport in the room, one of the rooms upstairs. So I'm not going to, and your driving license. So I'm not going to accept that you don't live here. Well, I can't pay for all of it right now. Mate. Okay. How much can you pay now? Um, I can pay about five hundred. No, that's not enough. I'm afraid. Is there anyone who can help you with this? That wasn't bad. Five hundred? No. No. Okay. All right. We're going to remove goods then. Okay. What do you mean remove goods? You got there's no goods there under my name. Okay. Who owns the goods in the house? I don't own them. Well, I'll tell you what, you get in touch with the person that does own them, tell that person to prove it to me, and then I won't take it. Or take a car off the driveway. Um, Which car off the driveway? Well, if any car goes, it will be the black um, BMW. That's not my thing. You also said you don't live here. It needs to be paid in full, or we remove goods. But if we remove goods, that's going to cost you further fees as well. No, you're taking nothing, mate. Alright, ring me back when you got the money. In this job, we, we get lied to on a daily basis, and it's really, really frustrating when people lie to us, because nine times out of ten, they get found out, and it's just dragged out a process hey, that could have been dealt BMW with in, in half the time. Gary and Connor have been in the house for 20 minutes. The debtor hasn't called back to increase his £500 offer. Way nor has he provided any proof that the BMW doesn't belong to him. So Gary calls the office for a recovery vehicle. Hi, John. Hi, Gary. I've yeah. explained to the debtor over the phone that we're going to start removing goods. Yeah. He wasn't even interested in making any phone calls. He just keeps telling me nothing, nothing belongs to him. Okay. So... You start the removal process, start my recovery. Yeah. The vehicles. Okay. Uh, yeah. Back, uh, yeah. Minutes, yeah. Yeah, okay, mate. Cheers, John. He gonna Bye. pull up. I know. Cuz wanna pull up. Talking crazy. I already know it. It's written. The recovery truck is on its way. But now Gary has to tell the debtor again that because of the extra charges involved in removing the vehicle, his debt has now increased. The balance is gonna be four thousand and fifty one pounds twenty six pence, okay? Oh, what do you mean it's four thousand? I told you there's going to be extra fees go on. That's that's the process. That's what I said would happen. How much is it in total, mate? Four thousand and fifty-one pounds. Oh, if I had four thousand, mate, I'd pay it straight away. But then my advice to you is make some phone calls and see if somebody can help you with it. See you later. First and foremost, I want to see debtors making an effort to get the money. If they're telling me they haven't got the money, I want them to try and reach out to other people that could help 
For some reason, right now in this frame, he looked like a, a a bat, like a Marvel character, like an evil one. He looked like he could be Thor's arch nemesis or something. I don't know. Right here, he looked evil. They need to accept. It needs to be paid. So if they're making efforts to get the money, then I'll give them the, the time that they need. Gary and Connor have now been at the house for over an hour. The debtor hasn't called back to offer any payment to save his car. But then his relative intervenes. Okay. Two, three thousand, two, no. Three, first, first, no. First. no, you need to ask him to pay the rest of it. With the situation at 3300 is a lot. Huh? Stalemate and a car at risk, the debtor's relative pays the full amount of the debt. 4000. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Dang. I just need to remind you that this is a voluntary payment because they don't care how much it is. They don't care who pay it or nothing. They just taking it. It's not your debt. Can I get a signature there to show that you that you've paid me the money? I'm going to tell you right now. Hell no. Ain't no way I'm getting no. And and you would have to get out. You'd be homeless. If I pay your debt, you got to get out. You don't you no longer have a place to stay. You got to go sleep rough. <laughs> Thank you for your payment. It's been an unexpected result oh, for Gary and Connor. Onwards. Next one. The yeah. agents got a result. Yeah, you gotta leave. In a trick. Who have seen an in. A recent survey has revealed that more than a third of UK adults who have seen an increase in their levels of debt in the past 12 months say that the rise in the cost of living is to blame. Over three quarters of people surveyed admit having some form of borrowing, while almost half have seen their debts increase by up to £1,500. Over 27 million people in the UK have outstanding debts as a result of consumer credit agreements. And that right there is my Harvard voice. And at the end of the day, if I'm on an important phone call or something like that, and I don't want you to think I'm... Uh, and, and at the end of the day, if I don't want you to... You know what I'm saying? If I don't want you to know there's a certain amount of melanin behind me, that's the voice I put on. High Court Enforcement Agents Matt Highway and Gary Ball are in Castle Vale, Birmingham. Birmingham. Go and see Mr. Thomas Taylor. And he owes £2,055.49 to a car credit company. The debtor, Mr. Taylor, bought a new car on a finance agreement, but defaulted on his repayments. The case was escalated to the High Court, and now Mr. Taylor must pay the £2,100 he owes in full today. Did they not repo the car? You're rare. Confidence, aren't you? Bringing the card machine with you. Yeah. Hi, hello, morning. I'm looking for uh, Thomas Taylor. Is it? Okay. D do you know Thomas? Oh, right. right, okay. Do you want to give me your dad's number? Very Go in touch with him. Matt tries Mr. Taylor's mobile. Hello. Is that Mr. Taylor? Yeah, speaking. Hello, sir. Good morning. My name's Matthew Highway. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. I'm at your property at the moment to enforce a High Court writ against you, sir. The standing balance at the moment of £2,055.49. pence. It, yeah, it was, sir. It's gone through the court system and obviously fees have been added since then. So, uh, what's the procedure with that, mate? Because normally I could pay anything like that. Right, the procedure is, sir, we're commanded by the High Court to attend the property today to either collect payment or to seize goods to the value of. That's what we're here to do. Oh, I'm going to try and get home. You're going to try and get home, yeah? Right, I won't do anything until you get back then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, <laughs> 
Why he chilling like this? Bro, get up. Oh, man, if I came home and bro was chilling, like, if you're going to be waiting for me in my house, be waiting uncomfortably. Don't come in my crib and get comfortable. Thanks, Mr. Tyler. Thank you. Mr. Taylor seems willing to cooperate. But when he arrives moments later, it soon becomes clear he wasn't expecting to find the agents inside the house. Yeah. Hello, sir. Mr. Taylor, are you? Hi, Mr. Taylor, yeah. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Do you want to calm down a little bit? No, I don't want to calm down. You don't want to? No, I don't. Did you want to discuss this or not? Yeah, and one outside will get a one I'm not going outside, no, I'm right here. Yeah? I'm right here. I couldn't give a fucking flying shot. If I want, it's my wife's house. For two, go upstairs and take all my fucking clothes or whatever. Because there's nothing in mine in here. Why would there's you some clothes here because I come and see my kids. Ah, oh, right, okay. Although Mr. Oh. Taylor says he doesn't live here, he is registered on the electoral roll at this address. He's Scottish. The agents have every right to enforce the writ. But first, they decide to... Bro got the reflector jacket and a reflective undershirt. That's I never seen that. I didn't even know they made a reflector shirt with a collar on it. That's tough. Give him time to calm down. It's massively important to uh, to be a good judge of character. Myself from a security you know, door background. I worked 13 years on the door in some, what some people would term as some of the roughest towns in the country. If you're not able to speak to people and you're not able to diffuse a situation, then you're not going to last very long. And those skills uh, transfer over to the job that we do uh, very, very well. The biggest part of our job is, is calming the situation down. Moments later, Mr. Taylor reappears. Well, I'm sorry, I'm just... I'm sorry, just, off, just take a minute, calm down, right? He now seems keen to tell the agents why he stopped paying the instalments on his new car. I got that car off the mate, right? The car was absolutely fucked. Yeah. Where's the road, were they? He came and took the car back twice, once for a week, second time for, I think it was 10, 12 days or whatever like that. They gave me a year's MOT, when I got on the M42 coming back for your it had been rattling and rattling, and I took it straight to the Merkel garage, and it failed on 27 things. It was fucked. You don't expect that from a new car, do you? Nah, nah, you don't, mate, you know what I mean? Like, new car as in zero miles? He's a fucking prick, I'll drive out of Eddie's and punch his fucking head in, mate, I ain't joking. With Mr. Taylor now making threats against the claimant, the agents must work hard to keep him calm. The problem we've got, Mr. Taylor, is we're simply High Court enforcement agents that have asked, been asked to execute this, this writ here today. Well, there's no way I can get that. Not a chance to have Mr. Taylor calls his sister for help. She probably talks to my sister. My sister's got a few points, but better she gives me an hour than With his sister not answering, Mr. Taylor calls his mother. I believe him. He got the reflective shirt tucked in. You know what I'm saying? That's a different type of person, you know? Okay. Yeah. She's right there, mate. But it'll get you nowhere. That's you know, you know, you know that anyway, don't you? Really living like that. He's got what answer for that. Oh, he's got what answer for this fucking race. With his mother unable to help, Mr. Taylor calls his brother-in-law. Uh, is that you, mate? Aye. You know that BM I've got. Yeah. But right. he's took it to court, mate, and says I've not paid anything at all. I know these guys have turned up in the house this morning, and they're here to take all the stuff away. How much cash can you today to get them to go away? I don't know, how much is it? Wait. Can I pass you into the guy, mate? Because I'm fucking running to you Alright, so we're in a bit of a situation, mate. You know, they need to raise some funds. I mean, there's £2,055 outstanding. Um, we, we are here for the balance, but if we can get something close to it, then, you know, I'll, I will speak to the client. Right, and. That don't, could you pay a grand on credit card? No, they don't pay, you can't play debt with debt. Pay a grand on credit card, is that okay? Uh, I, I can certainly make the call and ask them. Can you, oh, you can do that? Since we, oh, they don't take checks, they take a credit card. 
I'll push you back to Tom when I make that call, okay? Okay, thanks, Matt. Thanks. I'll just make a call, mate, and see what's uh, see what the crack is. Matt calls the office to see whether a down payment of a thousand pounds is acceptable to the claimant. But because it's still early morning, the office aren't able to contact the claimant. I can't get through to anybody, mate, because of the time of day it is. Matt wants to prevent Mr. Taylor from getting more agitated, so he thinks on his feet. What I suggest we do is, if I provisionally accept a thousand pounds now. Um, can can you, you tell me? You, I'm yeah, just you need you need to be closely know what's going. On. Hello, Mike. Hello, hi, Matthew. Hi, mate. You're all right. Um, yeah. So Tom wants me just to explain to you. So I can't get hold of the clients at the moment. So what I'm going to do? Uh, I'm going to provisionally accept the um, the thousand pounds at the minute. Um, okay. With the remainder of the balance when um, Tom next gets paid. I, I, I'm going to give you a thousand pound when I get paid, mate. Right. I, I've got rent and stuff to pay, and all you know what I mean. Then they're, they're going to want the balance. Well, no, there's no way I can do it. There's no way I can do it. I'll drive out of Reddit, you know, and get that geezer here. With <laughs> he won't smoke. Mr. Taylor making more threats against the claimant, Matt intervenes. It, it ain't going to help them, mate, is it? That, that, that's not going to solve the situation, is it? No, there's no way I can all, that, all, 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 all you. Hey, he's giving me he ex-hooligan vibes, ain't he? He's an old school hooligan back here. Getting that up and, and angry is just going to get you nicked, isn't it? That's well, not as I get nicked, I get uh, nicked, mate. But there's no way I can pay a thousand pounds when right. I get paid. But when I get paid, mate, I'll be lucky if I've got fucking 400 quid left. If that. Well, let's set up a payment plan for about 200. The situation is at a stalemate. But then, Mr. Taylor's brother in law wants to speak to Matt again. Hi, Mike. Right, well, we'll just go with it. I mean, I presume that. If I pay that money just now, then Thomas has got a week or so to try and sort it out with the guy. We've got two options really. We can either pay the balance off in full and the matter's resolved and it's finished today. That's two thousand and fifty five forty nine. Or the other option is as I said to him, you know, I can I can accept the offer provisionally of a thousand pounds today and then give him until he next gets paid to, to pay the balance. Obviously, you know, the, the longer it goes on the more so fees are incurred. Do they, so do the fees keep on going up? They do, mate, yeah. Um in which case we'll just clear the lot just now. You'll be able to do that, Mike, will you? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll pass you over. He trying to act shocked. <laughs> like he ain't no bro was going to clear the whole debt. Come on, man. I wish I had a credit card that had a $10,000 limit on it. Oh, God, I'll be out here swiping. Responsibly. For the things that I need. This is my colleague then, he's got a card machine here. Um, we'll okay. get the payment done. He, he wants to talk about possibly bringing a case himself. I'd rather he did that than what he's yeah. threatening to do and, and beating people up because I'm not going to get anywhere, anywhere, is it? No. Alright, I'll pass you over to Gary, he's going to take your details then. Hello mate. Hi there. Hiya, it's Gary here. To resolve the situation today, Mr Taylor's brother-in-law agrees to clear his debt in full. Are you paying by a credit card, are you mate? So, yeah, debit card then. Yeah, debit card would be great. Okay, mate. Well, we're all done. Okay. Sorry about the circumstances. No, I never wanted to Nice meeting you. Thanks to the agent's patience, the case is resolved peacefully. It took a little bit of calming him down there. He came back in a bit of a rage. But, you know, good result in the end. Payment in full. On to the next. Buddy knew Buddy was fake mad. He called his people fake mad. He was getting into character. Oh, I'm so flustered. I I can't believe it. Can you just pay it for me? Come on, man. Call that manipulative. Over the first half of 2017, more than 50,000 county court judgments were issued against businesses in England and Wales. This marks a 27% increase since the previous year, with the average reaching almost £3,000. $152 million pounds worth of county court judgments were issued against businesses in England and Wales in the first half of... It's a business. Sorry. Go bankrupt, start another one. High Court Enforcement Agent Gary Brown and trainee Connor Jackson are in Hassocks, West Sussex. 
to collect a debt of over £11,000 owed by businessman Mohan Fernando. The exact balance we're looking for is £11,750.31. But this isn't the first time Gary has tried to enforce this writ. We've had this for a while. I went to this address a few weeks ago. Um, I spoke to Mohan over the phone and I left with his control goods agreement. Last time Gary visited the debtor's house, he wasn't there. So he left a controlled goods agreement with Mr. Fernando's partner, Ingrid, listing assets that would be removed if £5,000 wasn't paid within 24 hours. So it's the removal day. Let's get negative. Let's get negative. But well, I try to explain that if you don't pay this as per the control goods agreement, then we're just going to force entry back into the property. But that payment didn't. Oh, gosh materialize so that may be what happens this morning now as the agreement has been broken gary has the right to force entry to seize the goods on the list but first he needs to see whether mr fernando is at home Nobody appears to be in. Hello? If there is anybody inside, I would advise you to come and open the door. See this smart. Picture a little mail thing in the wall, not the door. I just there's just something about the door that just I feel like if it's on the wall, like you could like it's more sturdy. I don't know. I don't want it at all. Before we damage it. It looks like Gary and Connor's only option is to force entry. But before they do, Gary wants to give Mr. Fernando one last chance to pay. Hi, Mr. Fernando. The situation has come to the point where we're about to force entry. We've got a locksmith en route and uh, we're going to be going in. My advice would be get back to the property as quickly as you can before we start removing goods. Thank you. Fine locksmith, mate. While they wait to see whether Mr. Fernando will turn up, Gary asks the locksmith to come down to the property. Hi Paul, it's um, Gary. Hi Gary. Hi, we do need you I'm afraid. Right, okay, I'll shop you there in about uh, five to ten minutes. Thanks a lot, cheers, bye Cheers, bye. Does the cost of the locksmith come out of the, get added on to the debtor's debt? It's extremely important to gain entry into a property, especially with invasive debtors, because they're not going to roll over and give me their money. They're just going to make it harder and harder for me to collect. So I have to respond with that, with the pressure that I put on to give me the result that I want. Ten minutes later, the locksmith arrives. I can't tell for certain, but it does look like there's a key on the inside of the uh, inner door. It might be worth going in the back. It looks like there's another locked door behind the main entrance. So they all head to the back of the property to look for a different way in. Now, all these doors are locked, Gary. That one easier to get in, though. I ain't never... Hey. Ah, we're in. Much appreciated. Hello. This makes for great negativity. Like the amount of negativity that that, that I would come home with, if I see my door house broken and and locksmith pick through the back. Oh, enforcement! Close. High court enforcement. Is anybody in? It's nice in here. Hello. Hello. The house appears to be empty. So with no word yet from Mr. Fernando. Gary calls his partner in sat down. Grid. He knows from the previous visit she has the debtor's permission to discuss the case with him. Good morning, Ingrid. It's um, Mr. Brown, the enforcement agent. Because the uh, arrangement was broken and the money wasn't paid as agreed, I'm back in your house now and I'm about to start removing goods. So my advice would be get Mr. Fernando to come home and deal with this. Thank you. Almost immediately, Ingrid calls back. Hello? Hello? Is this Ingrid? Yes. On my way over, what did you ring 
Fire. Well, we're going to remove goods unless the debt's paid. Um, the, the arrangement was broken. In full today, buddy. We had a promise of five thousand pounds. Well, well, the person to blame with this is Mohan. I'm trying to get hold of him. Right. Okay. I'll speak to you when you get home. Okay. Thank you. In these situations, you can't help but be empathetic to you know family members around the debtor. You know, because at the end of the day, it's not their debt, and they're just being drawn into the world of the debtor. And uh, and now we're knocking on the door. An hour later, Ingrid arrives home with her daughter and granddaughter. And to Gary and Connor's surprise... And the police? They're accompanied by the police. What the hell are the police gonna do but be on the DBL or the, 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 the people's side? Hello. Hey no, I'm good, thanks. We were called just because the bank are not willing to give five grand to a 77-year-old lady. Mm -hmm. With no evidence, effectively. So the right. bank have called us. Okay. It seems oh, the bank called, the, okay. To make sure it's not a scam, that she's getting scammed out of her, that makes sense. ...that Ingrid had been attempting to withdraw some cash to pay off her partner's debt. Right. But the amount she requested alerted the bank's fraud team. Yeah, yeah. You could be road traders for all you know. Yeah. The case has taken an unexpected okay. turn. With no debtor to deal with, and now the police involved, will Gary and Connor... Yeah, show the paperwork. ...ever get the 11... Brown and Connor. We were called just because the bank are not willing to give. Now, Gary and Connor show the police their identity so they can start to explain why they're here. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Great, thank you. She hasn't got any payment on her. So, okay. We're right. here to ascertain you are who you say you are. Yeah. <laughs> so, which I've seen your ID, so you're fine. Uh, the UK do the most. I swear to God, they do the most but prosecute criminals correctly, which is salutable. Um, I just if you got a copy of the your warrant, yeah, it's, say that you can be, it's, it's actually inside. inside. Yeah, it's in my paperwork. Gary takes the officers inside to show them the writ. That is the High Court writ, and that is a list of goods that I took into control when I was here last time. All right. Satisfied with the documentation, the police make it clear to Ingrid that Gary and Connor have every right Ingrid, to take no. goods if her partner, Mr. Fernando, doesn't pay. Now we've come along here, and it's clear from all the evidence here, you're not the victim of a fraud, that this is, a, this, this is all legal paperwork from the courts, um, they're entitled to do this. What's your situation now? Is, it, is there any money that you can take today that will stop you taking these goods? Unfortunately, it's the full balance or removal of goods, I'm afraid, but it will be... do that. It's not possible. I haven't done anything. I'm not involved with these things. How, how is it my mum's debt? It's not your mum's debt. No, it's not my mum's debt. I don't care about what he's done, okay? I don't care who like, does whatever to him. But it's got nothing to do with my mum. It's a sensitive situation. Gary has to make it clear to the family that he's not asking Ingrid to pay, but that any goods belonging to Mr. Fernando will be removed if he doesn't come up with the cash. He urges her to get him home. The arrangement has already been broken. My advice would be get Mohan to deal with it because it's his debt. But there's still no response from Mr. Fernando. So Ingrid heads back to the bank with the police. I think it's quite a low thing to do to just yeah, they bogus. leave your family members to deal with my presence. Mohan bogus. They get no respect from me. Oh man, I, I ain't even on the screen. Dang! <laughs> My bad. When they do that, because they're not facing up to it, they think that, edit that out. somebody else is just going to pick up the pieces and that they can just turn their back on it and, and hide away. Half an hour later, Ingrid calls from the bank. She's managed to raise £9,000. That's everything. It's £3,000 short of the full amount, but seeing the effort she's put into resolving her partner's problem, Gary accepts the offer. Hi, John. I think we'd probably be safe in taking nine grand and then giving them some time for the other money. Okay. We have you on a wrap up there, mate. Cheers, John. Yeah, nine bands. At, at that point, it's like, all right, they're actually putting in the effort Bye. that's required. 
When Ingrid returns, Gary tells her that the claimant has accepted the offer. But it soon becomes clear that this isn't the first time she has bailed her partner out. You need to leave him, Ingrid. I know you on your last rope and, and this is, you know, but you ain't got to put up like uh, on it with this. You are clearly better than this. You deserve to be free of BS in these later days of your life. Basically, most of the problems that are here today are down to him, not me. I know you're responsible from your haircut. I've been involved in paying up money for a long time to help him out with various things. He's using you. And the reason that I'm still working at 77 years old is because I have to keep him and I'm paying out all this time. Constantly for the last nine years. When you get badgered and bullied basically, constantly, you know, you get worn down. Are you a victim? Do you need help? And it's very difficult to stand up to it all the time. Thanks to his partner, Mr. Fernando's case is resolved for now. We're done. We're done. Yeah. Right. But if he doesn't pay the balance in 24 hours, Gary and Connor will be back. back. It's horrible to see someone go through that. God! You yeah. see their reaction and they're clearly distressed and they're clearly upset. I do feel a bit sorry for her. But she's got family rallying round her, which I think is more than Mohan can say for him. Mohan's a twat. A right twat. Y'all leave a like comment. I'm disappointed in Mohan.